Hey everybody, it's Jason Blah here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about, you know, something that comes up all the time, and it's this weird obsession that people have with being sore. Uh, and I want to say I don't understand it, but I actually do know where it comes from. It comes from the idea of no pain, no gain. It's because people associate, uh, you know, soreness with having gotten results, and the reality is uh, for me as a coach, usually my goal is to minimize soreness while maximizing results. In other words, when we understand a little bit about training and what causes soreness and what doesn't, you know, we, we understand that they're not as overlapped as people think they are. And I want to make the point here. What is it that I tell people all the time? This is about consistency. It's about the perception of difficulty. In other words, if you believe training is really difficult, it's going to be harder for you to be consistent, okay? Because people ask me all the time, like, you've been doing this for years and years. My God, like, you've even been filming all your workouts for four or five years, all of them. Where do you find the motivation? And I'm like, uh, it's just habits. I just built up the habits of doing it. It's my normal. But a big part of that is... I don't think that it's difficult. Now, does that mean that what I'm doing isn't difficult? I mean, you guys have watched me come in and do 100 pull-ups. At the age of 46, weighing 215, you guys have watched me do 100 pull-ups in one workout. It's supersets. You guys have watched me do five reps with 550 on a deadlift. <laughs> you know, just raw with chalk. Okay, obviously those things are hard. But I tell myself that they aren't, and that's that's a big part of it, is convincing yourself this is normal. That it's not really a big deal. You just get in and do your work, guys. And something I would point out, if you are sore all the time, and that's the thing I would ask someone, if you're gonna stick this out, because really it is a, it is about years and years. It's it's not about getting a quick fix, it's about doing this long term, it's about doing lifting and fitness and strength is a long-term lifestyle okay if you're sore every single day all the time is that going to impact your quality of life yes is that going to motivate you to keep going i mean people say oh yeah that's right. yeah you get that motivation for six months maybe a year but there comes a point and i want to be clear here there comes a point where you look at someone and go, do you really and truly believe that being sore all the time, if that's just going to be your shit, you really want to feel that way for the next 25 years? That That's your goal? You really think that's going to work? Oh, I promise you it won't. I promise you that if you train in a way that you always pursue soreness and you don't have any other metric and you're always attempting to be sore, you're going to quit training eventually. Eventually, you're going to reach a point where you're like, why am I? This is just too hard. I don't want to feel beat up. I don't want to hurt all the time. You're going to eventually reach that point. You might be 30. You might be 40 when it happens. But do you see where I'm going here? That is, that is not a recipe for success. Okay, And the reality is, soreness is, is not even... It's correlated with the results as you think they are. It's correlated with novel training response. It's correlated with muscle damage, and muscle damage is not necessarily one of the indicators of muscle growth. In fact, some of the research out there is saying that it's not even really a big factor. So, what causes soreness? Okay, a few things. Number one, not training frequently enough, right? People who have a leg day once a week tend to get really sore. People who squat twice a week, they don't really have the post-leg day soreness to anywhere near the same degree, if at all. Okay? In fact, their total squat volume might be higher per week when you add it all up with less soreness. Right? That low frequency, too much volume in one session for a given muscle. Adding a novel amount of volume you haven't done, that can cause soreness. But low, too low a frequency, okay, 
if you train the same muscle every three or four days, guess what? Like as I, I program mostly upper lower splits, all right, four day a week, all right? You just don't get as sore by default. It's a default position. You just don't get as sore. If you don't do too much volume, so here's the thing, don't increase your volume, you use them out. Do you need to increase volume much? You're like, let's say you aren't growing and you add a little work. Do you need to add five sets to grow? No, you probably add one set and start growing again, all right? And you probably won't really get sore. Like, let's say you've been doing three sets of bench on a workout, or three sets of incline. You add a fourth set. Are you really probably gonna get sore from that? No. But if you double the volume, double it, then you're probably gonna get sore. Did it create a better response? No. No, no it did not. You would have gotten some additional stimulus had, had you not been getting quite enough volume. You add one set, that's probably enough to grow on. Adding one rep somewhere, let's say you've been benching 225 or whatever for X number of reps, and since you pick up a rep somewhere, yeah, that's, that's a new enough training response to uh, grow your pecs and triceps and stuff. That, that actually will work. That's it. You made some progress. You stimulated some new adaptation. That is literally enough. So you did too much volume. Well, now you're sore. Didn't mean you got a better workout. It's your body responding to a novel response. All right, lots of eccentric reps. That's where a big issue. People start associating really slow and a lot of eccentric loading with, with gains because they got more sore never really been found to be true in the lab. Is it saying doing some eccentric is better? Yes. I've never been real evidence to support the idea that really slow, drawn out eccentrics do anything for growth. In fact, it's never even been necessary for people to get big and shape. Plenty of people have gotten incredibly strong, incredibly muscular, incredibly big without doing any of that. It's, it's never been a thing. Okay, but it will make you sore. Then I'm not saying you should never do it or it's not something you could do. I'm just saying that there, there's no actual reason to think it is necessary for maximum gains. But it will make you more sore. So we kind of come back over that point of people like, I tried this and did that and I got really sore for the first time and you look at, they did something like that. Well, yeah. I mean, if you had a novel training, you added a new exercise, particularly an exercise with any sort of stretch on it, of course. But that's not going to keep happening. You did a bunch of eccentric loading. Okay, yeah, but it's not necessarily going to make you bigger than if you had just done normal training. All it did was make you more sore. All right? It can be an indicator you added something new, but it can also be an indicator that maybe your frequency is too low. Now, if you just added something, the frequency is too low. Your frequency is zero. You've never done it. Yeah, it's been a long time since the last time you did it. It's probably been more than four or five days. You're like, yeah, because I never did it. Yeah. That's the issue. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.